Hi, my name is Jamie Yang. I'm a physical therapist at Agile PT in Palo Alto. Myself, along with my coworker Tiffany Yu, um, wanted to bring you some information during this time of COVID and shelter in place. We've been hearing many people have been increasing running mileage or starting to run because other modes of exercise aren't available, which is great for physical as well as mental health. The purpose of this video is to give some information about running, guidelines about increasing running mileage, as well as starting to run while preventing injuries. We'll provide you with a few ideas for strengthening power and mobility exercises. This material is meant to be informational and not meant to be used as medical advice or a training regimen. If you have any questions regarding the injury, please seek the help of a medical provider. If you have specific questions regarding this presentation, please feel free to contact me, Jamie, at agilept.com or Tiffany at agilept.com. We can't talk about running without considering load and the capacity of our body to handle that load. When comparing running to walking, there's quite a difference in the amount of load or stress that your body experiences. Our bodies are actually fantastically good at responding to stress that is added gradually. The muscles, tendons, bones, cartilage have time to adapt to the stress that's placed on it so they can in turn get stronger. I like to think of it, everyone has experienced a blister. You overload the skin too quickly and you'll develop a blister. In contrast, if you give it small bits of that load, same amount of load over time, a callus will form. So even the skin has the ability to adapt. However, if we load too quickly, that's when things tend to break down. You can experience something like a tendonitis or even a stress fracture. If you've never run before, it might make sense to start with a run-walk interval, starting with a minute of running, walking a minute, and alternating for about five repetitions. Once you figure out how your body responds to this, two days later, you may want to try adding an interval. In contrast, if you're already running a decent amount, we generally suggest no more than a 5-10% to 10 increase per week at the very most. For example, if you're currently running 40 miles a week, you wouldn't want to increase your load more than 2-4 to four miles the following week. Running can often elicit some discomfort, so how do you know if you've overdone it? A general rule of thumb is paying attention to the intensity of that pain. So if you have a discomfort of about a level 2 out of 10 and it resolves within 24 hours, your body has probably handled that load. In contrast, if something becomes persistent or increasing in intensity and doesn't resolve within 24 hours, it may then be time to seek a medical professional or temporarily back off of running. It's important to listen to your body. Even if you did a certain amount of mileage, thinking that you handled that load just fine last week, your capacity to handle that load may be moderated by other factors, such as the amount of sleep you've gotten, the amount of stress you're under, or how your nutritional intake has been. Many people are under the assumption that if you run, you are strong. I actually say you need to be strong to run. Running is a series of single leg impacts. Each limb sees two to three times your own body weight. When your foot hits the ground, there's actually a ground reaction force that can be absorbed by passive structures like bone, cartilage, and the meniscus, as well as active shock absorbers like the muscle and tendon units. So if you think about the leg, the primary active shock absorbers are your quads, gluteals, and calves. These help attenuate the ground reaction force along with the passive structures like the bone, cartilage, and meniscus. Therefore, having these muscles be strong and endurant is important. As I mentioned before, running is about two and a half times body weight, but 50% is unloaded by the elastic recoil from our tendons, which is almost like free energy. The active muscle contraction coupled with that elastic recoil from our tendons helps decrease the load that we actually feel in the limb. It's like cocking back a slingshot. You get that elastic recoil and then you can utilize that energy. So half of the mechanical load is through the optimization of the storage and release of that energy. The final component I wanted to talk about was mobility. 
In running, the goal is sagittal plane motion or moving forward. Within that, the main areas that we get restriction are big toe extension, ankle dorsiflexion, knee extension, and hip extension. If you lack mobility in any one of these joints, it tends to result in compensatory movements in the other planes. This brings us to our exercises. I'm demonstrating a couple of our favorite exercises that target gluteals, quads, and calves for the strengthening and power aspect. I suggest starting with 10 to 15 repetitions, three sets of them, and working your way up depending on the mileage that you're trying to achieve. If you haven't run before, these exercises could help support the increased load you'll be asking your body to handle. If you're already running, these getting these muscles stronger and more powerful can help you run faster, make hills feel easier, and decrease your risk for injury. Finally, the last group of exercises that I demonstrate are called our active dynamic warm-up. I suggest doing 8 to 15 repetitions before your run. These target mobility and get your body prepped for running. Just as a summary, running can be a great form of exercise. Ideally, you introduce this increased load to your body in a gradual fashion so it has time to adapt. At the same time, you want to make sure you have strength, power, and mobility required to ideally not overload the tissues. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact myself, Jamie, at jamie at agilept.com or Tiffany, tiffany at agilept.com. We are available via telehealth appointment for individualized wellness consultations 
as well as evaluation and treatment of injuries. Thank you so much for your time.